What's going on guys? Don't you know, Jamie Papa Bam, fellas! Oh my gosh! That was, I think, I think my voice cracked. I don't know, you guys can comment down below. I can't tell, but I feel like that Bubba Bam, like, I really, like, voice something cracked. Welcome to TD Barrett Live. I don't, I don't even know what that means. Essentially, this video is gonna be one of the first videos that you guys ever see where there's not a lot of cuts. I'm gonna talk through every single read that I make, every single thing that I do. I hope that you guys learned something or you, you're either gonna get smarter or you're gonna get dumber by watching this. Uh, it all depends on how this game goes. So hopefully you watch this video and you're like, dang, I learned so much. Uh, and if this, this is something that you guys might wanna see again, kill the like button. We're gonna talk about movies. We're gonna talk about stuff because this is hashtag TD Barrett Live Call. Boom, bam, look at the screen. We're gonna be playing against X Risen Angel. Um, he's currently the number one guy. I thought for a while this guy was a DC glitcher, and then I realized that he's in the same clan as all the other number one players. Um, with Strider, Rocket, all these guys are in a clan, and they've said that he's legit. He just does not allow points. He's got a really, really good defense. He's on an 11 game win streak. We're gonna be playing him, and it's live! Teddy Barrett live! I love Mountain Dew. I like Canada Dry, uh, Ginger Ale, what else about me? I have a Miami Marlins hat. I, um, my favorite song is Seven Rings by Ariana Grande. I, I'm just, we're gonna, you're gonna learn some stuff. We're gonna have some fun. Uh, I'm gonna get into the game and then we'll go back to hashtag TD Bear Live. Okay, so obviously just because of the fact that this guy, uh, I'm gonna be doing hashtag TD Bear Live, I'm gonna let him um, pick his team first. He's going with the Cardinals. Ah, I feel like I need Aaron Rodgers. We gotta throw some freaking Rodgers lasers around here today. I feel like that's gonna be fun. New England is what I run on offense. I don't really care if anyone knows that. Um, Packers, and I'm gonna go receive. Let's dance. Okay, so, movies. I love movies, okay? I am, I'm trying to think of my favorite. I've recently watched Star Wars. Me and my wife watched Star Wars a while ago. It's actually really, really good. So shout out to Star Wars. That's kind of what's on my mind. I like Game of Thrones. I like rom-coms. I like, my favorite movie is probably The Prestige. It's on Netflix. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's a magic movie. I like Now You See Me, but not to the extent, not to like the same powerful extent that I like The Prestige. The Prestige is probably my favorite movie. My favorite food, oh, definitely burgers. I, I like A&W onion rings. I crave them. Uh, A&W onion rings are super, super good. Anything else, I'm just, I'm just trying to get all this out of the way. My, like I said, Seven Rings is probably my favorite song. I like country music, but not as much as I like Seven Rings. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, first play of the game. So this is, if I'm trying to do any Madden teaching, I always start off the game with the opposite of what I want to do. So let's say I want to pass, because I do want to pass against this guy a lot. I want to start the game running. Now the reason that I, I, I feel like this is a good idea is you always want to start doing the exact opposite of what you want to do. So that they can't really like make assumptions, they can't go and just prepare for exactly what you want to do. So essentially, my first two plays of almost every single Madden game, competitive or not, pro, tournament, I always, I'm always, almost always running the ball in the first two plays. So that all game that they have to think about the run. Fake, like right here, I don't know if it's even a great, actually this might not be a great situation, but even if I have to get to third down, I can. Do a couple fake audibles. There's too many people on the line right now where I feel like if Aaron Jones can just break this one little area, he could go for a little bit. And there, I've started the game running the ball twice. Now, now that I've got a running first down, this is always my rule about running first down. As soon as you get a running first down, you run the ball the next play. If, if, like, if something's working, you don't fix it. So he's in like a three, He's in a bit of a weird defense here. I probably could throw a quick out to Randall Cobb. I'm gonna do fake adjustments. Always do fake audibles so that he thinks you're setting something up. And we're just gonna go with the draw play here. Get Aaron Jones going, good stiff arm, good stuff. So that's a gain of what, four or five. He's in cover six. So look at that, every play, even if you're running, make sure to look at the coverage, it's a dead giveaway. So now I've ran a couple of times out of this. Now I really, I'm gonna continue running, but how I wanna do it, is different, so I'm gonna do some audibles. He's got a bunch of people there. I'm gonna move to a formation that a lot of people like to pass out of, such as Bunch. Now, like I said, you do your audibles, you move this guy, you move this guy out because that's a very, very common vertical setup. You kind of get him set up. So he's thinking like, yo, this guy's gotta be passing. And then what do I do? I go right back to run. So at this point in the game, I have him in the palm of my hand. I, and then it, when I do decide to pass, let's say I go here, I'm, I'm gonna put Alan Lazard here. When I do decide to pass, he's gonna always be thinking about the run all game. He's gonna know that this guy likes to run the ball, which is exactly what I freaking want. Now, rule is, if your last first down was a running play, you have to run the first play. There's no point in going out and passing. If something's working, don't fix it. Very common setup that I do 
is has three adjustments and a motion with this guy. So when I go back to it, I do the exact same three adjustments. You gotta make sure every single thing looks exactly the same. You do the same three adjustments and you go with Aaron Jones. Hit a little stop and go and we're laughing. But what I'm saying is, let's say you're on a common adjustment you run, like let's I run this play a lot, uh, curl flats, and I do a slant and out. Make sure that you're doing the same amount of adjustments when you're running it that you are passing it so that he can adjust whatsoever. Now this situation, same rule. He hasn't stopped the run yet, keep on running it. See, there he stopped it. Now he's earned enough respect where I will throw the ball. So, oh, looking at his coverages, it's a cover nine. A lot of people are gonna probably go immediately and cover the flat route in this situation. So I think there's a chance that we could have Alan Lazard kind of on the outside. Uh, I'm gonna put Mercedes Lewis and then I'm kind of just watching on that side. On the back side, I'm just gonna throw Aaron Jones on a little check down, but it's a high low read of the guy. I'll, I'll have Nick, my editor, put a, a high low read on the guy over there. So boom, you look, you read the high low, he went high up and you pretty much have a touchdown. Essentially, I was just staring at that guy the entire time. There was no reason to look at anything else. Simple, simple high-low read. And we almost have a touchdown. Okay, let's talk, I'm trying to think. I, um, fun facts about me. Uh, before, I've worked two different jobs before I was a YouTuber. I was a painter. I was the world's worst painter. I sucked so much. I got hired to a student painting company and uh, I haven't scored a touchdown yet, so I should probably shut up. I'm just gonna go with the stretch strong side here because I feel like I can get out the gym and I can. I was a painter, so that was a, but I, so I've been fired. My only job, I worked at a jersey store. I was fired from the same job twice. I legitimately was fired from the same job twice. Now a lot of people know this. This was in grade 11 and grade 12. I made, I'll, I'll start with that. I made some ridiculously dumb decisions at that job. For example, like, to get fired from the same job twice is impressive. First time I got fired, my actual friend, he, like, I don't think he, I was kind of being the worst. I, you, there was a massage chair outside of the store. I worked at a mall and I would work like five to nines by myself. And this massage chair would always just like call my name. It would just look at me and be like, Brett, like go get a massage. And I would just like go and I'd get a massage. And then this loser freaking security guard, and I know exactly who it is told my manager about it. And then my manager was like, hey Brett, are you getting massages? And I'm like, oh yeah, like just the odd time it won't happen again. I did it again. And then the, this, this time, the security guard, he walked by me. I, I remember vividly him walking by me, the security guy. And I was like, you're gonna go tell my freaking manager, aren't you? Told my manager that was strike one. Strike number two was we had just got a Des Bryant jersey. So I loved, like it was a white, all white Cowboys jersey, Des Bryant. And uh, we had like the choice to wear jerseys. So my everyday sub was from this place. It's a Canadian place called Safeway. And it's my, it was my everyday sub. I got the same sub every day and it had just a dumb amount of Chipotle sauce on it. Like just a stupid amount of Chipotle sauce. And I have put on this white Des Bryant jersey and I go to bite in and the biggest gob of Chipotle hits the jersey and I was working with my assistant manager and I'm like uh, uh so I did what any man would do in that situation I hid the jersey now I'm not proud of what I did I'm, I'm stopping his run game really really good right now just shooting out from the safety I hid the jersey uh, like at the very back I'm like no one's ever gonna like it's so far hidden the manager find it and she knew immediately she's like that had to be Brett uh, I'm running just match coverage here. I always like to start off in match to see if he can beat it. I'm going to man up the solo side. Uh, and then I'm potentially going to man up the running back. And then I'm just watching. This is, oh my gosh, good throw. Um, so that, that was strike two. Strike three was there was a bench. There was a bench that like in the back. And she, my manager always said, Brett, don't take the bench, bench out and sit it behind the thing. Like, don't do it. And every five to nine shift, like, it gets tired. Is this, is this guy chewing clock? Are you, like, how, is this the way you got to sell out to get number one? He's chewing clock. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Um, so my manager says, Brett, do not touch the bench. This guy really is just going to run this play and chew clock. Um... And I'm like, oh yeah, for sure. So she dies, arguably the smartest move I've ever seen. She leaves, okay? But she doesn't actually leave the mall. She does a loop. She does a, just a loop of the mall. 
I come out and I have the bench. My wife just went for a run, so my dog's barking. I gotta pause. Um, go, go, I gotta go. Heidi, one second, I'll be right back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. So, his plan, he gets ball at half. I think this guy is just gonna run the ball every single play. So, he's gonna get the same thing. I like to man up RB. Um, what is he going into? Okay, I like to man up the running back in match a lot of the times. Get there, Savage. Oh my gosh. This dude plays so freaking lame. Oh my gosh. So, then that was my third strike. She comes around the corner, okay? And it had been like 10 minutes after I had promised her that I was not going to take out the bench. Um, I, had, I was like, you have my word. I, I will not mess with the bench. She comes back and I am legitimately sitting on the bench. I look at her like a deer on the headlights and I go, hey, fired. Boom, fired. So, I was fired. This is that was like grade 10, middle of grade 11. This guy's still chewing clock on me. Super freaking cool, buddy. No way, he just ran the ball again. This guy legitimately runs every play. Oh my gosh. That's why his games are so freaking low scoring. It all makes sense. This guy is a runner. Every play. This and I ran pretty well every play too, but oh my god. So, then they they fire me, okay? I'm gonna switch to just three through five. I have to stop his run before I can run the other. Then they fire me. The two people that they hired to replace me both stole like thousands of dollars from the company. They literally stole jerseys. They left one shift with the entire float. And those are the people after me. He, he's got Andy Isabella at freaking, um, at tight end. Okay, timeout. We need a little bit of time left. Okay, I, got, I might have to lock in, but they both get fired. I get rehired. Moral of the story is I got rehired, and then I got fired again. Then I became a painter. Um, like I said, you guys, these might be things that you're curious about with me. Oh my gosh. This is freaking frustrating, man. I feel like the game's gone. I feel like I blinked and the game was gone. My most significant funny memory as a painter, and if you have any idea of how stains work, um, you'll probably laugh. Oh my gosh, that's the RPO glitch. It's the RPO glitch. Um, so we were staining someone's deck. Okay. So I get the stain and it's my job to stain this deck. And I stain the entire deck and I get to the end and it like, I put the thing, I'm like, oh, it's super red at the end. Cause like before I was like, this is a pretty clear, I remember thinking like an idiot, like, oh, this is a pretty clear stain. This is pretty clear. Little did I know, oh my gosh, this is that, this, that was the most painful drive ever. Little did I know, just think how stupid I was. I stained it with the clear stuff. So I stained an entire deck, deck without stirring it. So I didn't stir whatsoever. So I get to the end and it's like bright red and I'm like, what on earth is going on? Like it's, it's so... That should be boxed. That should be boxed. It is. I was like, why is this so red? And then I'm like, oh my gosh. So I did, I just went and I went to the guy who I was standing. I'm like, hey man, I'm going to redo this. You don't have to pay me. I'll work for free. But I'm like, I literally am just an idiot. I was like, I just, I'm, I'm dumb. Like I had no sweet clue. That was my, my two jobs before. Hey, that got us through that disgustingly painful defensive series. Okay, so now I have to pass. I have zero timeouts. Um, first thing I want to see whenever I'm like playing someone is if what they have their man aligned and their, their stuff set up is. So I like to switch to a new formation just as kind of a gauge because sometimes when you switch or motion, it'll mess with their alignment and then people will start running. So for example, like oftentimes when people have their man aligned weird, when I move Lazard, the guy, like the DBs sometimes switch. This is just a simple high-low concept. See how they that they switch, but that's honestly, okay, I'm looking that left. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw to Aaron Jones. Get out of bounds. Okay, now we can actually see what coverage he's in. Cover six, show two. Okay, what from what I saw based on his adjustments there, so his zone drops, I believe, aren't far enough to cover this route. So I'm immediately gonna look to this. So right now, I'm watching his user, and I need to get his user to move so I can roll out to the right and throw to Scantling. So I'm gonna take one step this way. Do you see that step? That step that I did is so freaking crucial. Not a lot of you guys might see that if you're just watching my videos not live, but you see how my one step that I made to the left moved him. It moved his user over. So he actually had to legit go to that side. Now. That's a super skill gap thing 
because just me making that slight movement, he now doesn't worry about that route. As soon as he takes a step, I move and he's wide open because I had a feeling his zone drops were not set. Obviously, we can't run the ball here. He gets ball at half. He's going to run the ball seemingly every single play. Um, so I'm going to switch. It looks like we're getting a blitz off the side. So when, as soon as I see that, I'm just going to go to tight end whip. That guy on the left is going to blitz, and he's going to be giving me a free, like, 10 yards. Ideally, when you see people trying to blitz, it's best to get it out of their system immediately. So now that he knows that I can just throw that, like, I could sit back and try and deliver the dot to get a touchdown, but now that he knows that, I, it's hard for me to make a throw. So is he going to continue to do that? That's the million-dollar question. It kind of looks like it. So I'm going to do a concept here. I'm frozen. Shoot, one sec. I'm frozen. Okay, we'll see if he accepts it. I don't think he will, just given the circumstances, because he, he obviously knows my controller glitched. I don't think he'd accept it. He accepted it. Oh, this guy's great. Okay, he's in cover two. Like, how do you not know? Like, I sat there for 20 seconds. How do you not have some clue? Like, hey, dude just glitched out. Oh, okay. I'm gonna just look. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for Lazard here. I don't think he's blitzing me on that side. Um, okay. Yeah, I kind of have an idea of what I want to do. But based on the defense that I just saw, it's kind of a cover four match look. So if I do score, it's gonna be something like this. And it's gonna be Lazard getting open. I need a lot of time though to do that. And he usered it really well. He usered it really good. Okay, five, four, three. Let's just take the field goal. I'm, I'm, I'm content. We had no timeouts. Oh my gosh. This is the dumbest thing ever. Okay. Good stuff. Okay. Oh, defense, I gotta focus. He legit, like, he ran RPO glitch and ran every freaking time. Based on everything I'm seeing, I'm just gonna put my flats on zero because he seems to really love, like he actually, he hasn't made like a big throw downfield all game. So I'm just gonna put my flats on zero if I need to uh, and just do everything I can to shoot that gap and force him to throw the ball. Here goes the clock, choose it down, boom, good defense. Please be seated. Okay, so now I have to think of the defense. I feel like based on what I've seen, a 25-5, actually, you know what? This dude's not a good passer. Let's just be brutally honest. I don't think he's a good passer. I think we just scream at him with Eric Stokes. I think we send our entire team. We blitz him with 10-yard zones that'll cover anything quick, and we guard Andy Isabella. Even press it. Oh my gosh, he freaking threw that too. Oh my gosh, I was looking at it. I did not think he'd throw it because I was literally running directly with it. Okay, make everything look the same. This is a run play. Yep. It's a run play. Sit him down. Good job, he had him! Good job, he had him! Okay, um, ooh, okay, I, I'm switching to this. I gotta remember what my adjustments were. Okay, man him up on him. I know, I don't need to worry about the tight end. Guard that, guard that. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was boxed too. Good defense. It's an RPO. Okay, the only way to stop those is go zero yard curl flat and, uh, and pass commit. So those are easy, those will like, if he throws that again, Eric Stokes will pick it. That's really my, oh, good defense. Oh, this is freaking painful, man. I'm gonna try it just in case he does it. No one's manned up on, on Rondell Moore. See what I mean? By putting that, so that adjustment is a zero yard curl flat and a pass commit. So I'm gonna go here. He said, man him up to A. And I'm, oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot, and he threw a book. Oh, gosh, being offside sucks. Okay, so now I'm not going to blitz. I'm going to put a 20-yard on that side. So I'm going to make sure there's a 20-yard zone on Isabella's side, and then I'm just going to use her this side, and then put B in, like, let's put B in a spy, because he hasn't really attacked this part of the field over here yet. And he didn't. Okay. 
Essentially, anything quick to the flat is going to be covered. The goal is here that, like, I'm going to move everybody in to intimidate him. Goal is here that he has to throw something short. Let's go! Good defense. That's the RPO glitch. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm doing the same thing. To stop Kyler Murray in these situations, there's no other defense that I think really works. Okay, bunch offset. Okay, bunch offset. We can blitz this if we want. We can blitz this if we want. But I got to move this guy in. I got to move him in. And I got to use him and just get one-on-one. -on -one. So I have to follow the running back. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Against the Cardinals, it's kind of the lesser of two. Like, you kind of got to pick. What do you want to do on those? I The pressure didn't get there. As soon as he, like, see, yeah, nobody got there. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. There's an onside clip. Kick glitch. Okay, no, we're good. Interesting. I thought he was going to get... That's, honestly, the, strategic, the strategy behind that, what he just did, is not bad. This, the whole strategy behind everything he just did was he doesn't want me to score with no time left. He wants to have a drive, so... And just see if I can maybe hit Lazard here. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what the blitz is like. Oh, he's on his defensive line. He's on his defensive line. Yeah, that's a laser. Like I said, the reason I wanted to score quick there... That was, that's just a cover six, cover three beater. Um, the reason I wanted to score right there, that's pretty easy. It's just a post streak, a slam, is because now I'm kind of taking that power away from him where he wanted to have a drive where he has two minutes left and he wins with nothing. Now at least I'm forcing him to be like, yo, you got to actually come in here, make a decision. Oh my gosh. Honestly, I don't think he's that good of a passer. I think I can just man up. Like, the way I see this. Man up, make him make a read. Try and play decent run defense. But now, you know what he's going to be doing here. He's going to have two clock turned on. I can tell you exactly how he's going to play this. He's going to have two clock turned on. And he's just going to burn this clock all the way down. See? Boom. All that time. Gone. He is banking on scoring with 0 .00 seconds left. And I would love nothing more than to just ruin that for him. Good try. But he's honestly, I don't know if this is the best. Like, that's all right. Oh, gosh. Okay. I think he's running again. If not, I got to cover the deep ball. Let's go! Keep running! That is why. This is a very, very underrated tip that I'm going to give you guys right now. That you may, well, and it makes sense, logical sense. If you're usering, where, where is your user? I'm going to ask you guys a question. Where is your user? If your user is in the middle, shade outside. There is no reason that Sullivan should do what he just did unless you're shade outside. So if your user is in the middle, which it is. Like, I, there's like very little chance that it's not in the middle. You always shade outside. Good job, Jones. This is where you laugh at your opponent. This is one of my favorite parts of the game. This is where you say, hey, good morning, idiot. You just wasted all that time. You've been killing the clock all game. Hey, I bet you wish you had that time right now. You know what? Okay, now what do we got? We got a max blitz look. Okay, two things I'm looking for here. Where his user goes. I think either Adams or Jones will be open here, depending on the situation. And I was right. I don't know, did you guys see what I was looking at there? Essentially, when they all out blitz like that, there's a good chance that you're either going to have the running back or the slant. You can't blitz your entire team and also cover everything. At least it's not easy to do something like that. Um, so that's kind of where the rationale for that comes in. Now, 215 left. We run the ball. We taunt because he's killed clock on us and he accepted our five yard delay of game penalty. And we laugh as we win. That, that's essentially what we do. I enjoy winning. What is it? Part of me, like the sick part of me, wants to make him pass. This, this is where I'm sometimes a little bit evil. I think he sucks at pass. I'm not suck. I don't think he's a good passer. So a part of me is like, Yo, if I can score here, I force this guy to actually have to pass. I just love the poet. Hash cake. The hashtag I want in the comments is hashtag poetic justice. I love when people who kill clock end up getting the clock killed on them. This is just the best. Like people who just 
Milk the clock all game. I love when they get their sweet, sweet, like, just payback. Also, a tip for these situations, there is a glitch in this game where if you go offside in a goal situation, that they can actually stop the clock. So a little quick tip here just so this never happens to you guys. Um, to ensure that you don't lose. Um, like if I were to break the huddle right now, he could go offside and get the ball back. So just, just stay here. Wait these 28 seconds. Christmas. I love Christmas. Um, my wife does some really good Christmas baking. Um, yeah, no, my birthday was recently. A lot of you guys are asking what I did for my birthday. I had waffles. I went to the mall. I watched movies. What did we watch? We watched Christmas Vacation, I think, on my birthday uh, with the family. Yeah, man, life's good. I hope life's good for all of you guys as we watch this, these dreams just shatter. But, like, if you want to be a jerk, you can just stop it at one second. Like, there, there is, you still have potential to be a jerk. Like, don't get me wrong. You can come out in, like, a run formation like this. And then you can just throw a red zone threat Moss to Devontae Adams to make the score look worse on him. These are just the little things that you can do in a game to make yourself feel better. So, like, let's say, oh, I'm not quite happy with this. I want to make this guy feel even worse. Oh, you can do that. Like, that's, that's not, I don't, I'm not opposed to that. See, now the score looks better. Everyone's happy. We're all smiling. And yeah, we win the game. Ba -ba bam Foul leg! I don't know if you guys will ever want me to do this again. It was painful because we were playing against a guy who, like, literally, we didn't have as many plays. Like, I only ran the ball. I ran the ball 12 times. He ran the ball 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 times in that game. 21 times, and he passed 8 times for literally 85 yards. Like, that guy runs the ball more than anyone I've seen. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. You might see another gameplay in this. Um... Where hopefully I'll play a little bit more fast paced. I don't know. I might just end it here. You might see another gameplay against Risen Angel. Um, and I'm just going to like, I'm going to take the Cardinals and I'm going to try and dot his face up. You may see that. You may see that. You may not. But if not, hope you guys enjoyed this video. But if you see something after, you're going to see something right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you do me a huge favor and subscribe right now. Also, I have a second channel where I post NHL, MLB, NBA content. Link is down below. Go check that out. That would mean the world to me. Road to 200K on that channel. Thank you guys once again. My Instagram is at BrettBQB. My Twitter is TBarrettYT. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching.